So every August 13th, when there's a great big dog and pony show, oh, it's Fidel, he's alive another year, Lincoln kind of slinks away in Miami, no one's going to know about it, um, that he was born on, he's, it's truly a cursed man. But in Lincoln's heart, he believes that he should be the next president. And George W. Bush is somebody who was willing to accommodate that um, in supporting those aspirations. So if he, if he is defeated in this seat by Raul Martinez, who all by himself is a saga we could talk about for a week because he's a man who thought he should have had that seat many years ago. Um, if he is defeated, it is not just the defeat of, um, of a congressman. It would, be, it, it would really be the mainstay of, of U.S. Cuba policy, because it is Lincoln and his brother Mario, who also got himself a seat, um, that really you know, beat the drum. Ileana Ross Lincoln and is the third person. Her, her competitor is not a strong one. She's equally um, fervent in this, and she is tutored by her father, who's very, very close to militant groups. Um, however, uh, she wants to hold a seat on the Foreign Relations Committee. Uh, if Lincoln goes, Ileana will move much more into a pragmatic realm. So this is the election and the seat to watch. Um, so I want to, in terms of these changes, in terms of what's going on in Cuba, we hear a lot about the new Politburo. Uh, we now see we have new names that most Americans and probably here in Sweden never heard about. We have a man named Ramon Machado. We have a man named uh, Casas. Um, and what we're seeing is um, this disconcerted a lot of people in Washington who wanted to see more of the reformers, say Carlos Laje. He was somebody who's regarded as possibly having more economic reform. But what I see here is like, is what's going on with the Castros is their first mandate is to maintain power, to shore up power. And people like uh, Machado, uh, Casas, Esteban Lasso, and, a, and the resurrection of a man named Ramiro Valdez, who once was very powerful and he's been given a whole new portfolio to control the internet. Can you get, can you get a better gig than that? I mean, he's very, very influential portfolio. They have been brought back. So you have a lot of people in Miami and Washington say, see, uh, you think there's an opening, but in fact, they're bringing back the dinosaurs. They're bringing back their own historicos. But I see it as a, du as a double thing. They're shoring up their power base, like all politicians do, but they're also opening it up. And I think these changes are hugely significant in Cuba. You, have these, uh, you are now allowed to have cell phones. If you have a cell phone, you can then go on the internet. And I am sorry, when that genie is out of the bottle, you do not get to put that one back, no matter what Ramiro Valdez may get up. And I know Ramiro Valdez famously said that the internet is the wild cult of the technologies that has to be controlled. I do not think that in the next couple of years, yes, you can close down this site or that site. I do not believe in Cuba, in which one of the great passions is talking and conversation and argument is going to be controlled. Um, I do not think that will go back in the bottle. They are moving towards home ownership. Excuse me, but the last time I heard home ownership is the cornerstone of Western economic democracies. You own your home, that is the American dream, right? Well, they are moving towards that. I'm not saying it's gonna happen overnight. There's still this bizarre, complicated, um, permuta system that, you know, takes um, Talmudic scholars to, to ravel, but um, it is moving towards a, a change there. Um, uh, there. So in other words, what I see is alternating current. Yes, they're shoring up their power base, but there's openings that I think are extraordinary. Now, of course, the response in Washington from George W. Bush, who in his, you know, you know, he's never out of um, character. He immediately called Raul Castro dictator light. You know, he's nothing if not diplomatic. Uh, and Tom Casey, the State Department, uh, said something like, how can we miss you if you never go away? Um, so they, they have, and then the, the mantra out of Washington is all these uh, changes are cosmetic. I do not believe they are cosmetic. I also think they come from a certain... Um, um, confidence in Cuba. And I want to mention something 
uh, that I think two important issues that do not get discussed. And if it's too inside, well, whatever. Cuba has discovered oil. Okay? Cuba has discovered oil. Uh, I'm not sure, um, nobody knows uh, when and how much. But right now, it's looking very, very good. They have discovered oil in the North Florida Straits. It has been discovered by Repsol. We know it's for real because the Norwegians, your neighbor, are over there doing the deep sea drilling and we know the Norwegians don't do anything unless they think it's a sure thing. In terms of deep sea drilling, I don't know about anything else. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and we have the Malaysians, the Chinese, etc. So that site is uh, looking very good. I'm on the, I, I work at, I'm, I have a, I'm on the Brookings Cuba Task Force and one of our guys there on the force is Jorge Pignon, who was head of BP Latin America. And he's certainly no fan of the Castro family, and he is very wowed by the amount of oil. There's another a site called the Eastern Gap, and it's going to be split between Venezuela, Mexico, and Cuba. That's looking very good, and their old San Fuego site is producing. There is a reason that Lula from Brazil showed up in Cuba to visit Fidel, and I do not believe it was a condolence call. There's a reason that he came and gave him a billion dollars in credit, and it is not, again, out of the goodness of his heart. The Brazilians want to, are, want to maneuver against the Venezuelans and Chavez. They have their eye on that oil, one which they've also signed various leases on. Uh, the Brazilians, Petrobras has a lot of leases in the, in the Florida Straits, but they also have their eye. Remember the Cuban sugar industry? You know, and with all those visions of the old machinery falling apart? The, but the Brazilians want the, the sugar for ethanol. So what I'm trying to say here, uh, through the jet lag, is, is that this island that we used to, in all the images that Raphael talked about, and many people thought about as this country renowned for rum, sex, sin, and sugar, sugar, is I think in the next five years going to be an oil player. When someone like Jorge Pignon tells me that uh, they may not only become energy sufficient, but an energy producer, this is going to change everything. Let me be frank about it. It's over. Because the oil companies have been in Washington. The, all the lobbyists from all the oil companies I've spoken to, too, they are pounding on the doors, and they are saying, we cannot allow Cuba to hit oil and it all to go to China. And remember the other thing is, is that it's all very fortuitous. Fidel Castro has had more luck than, I, I don't know, than a Chinese bookie. I don't understand how he got so lucky. Just as he's about to pass on, he gets... Hugo Chavez, who's basically, you know, Juan Peron with oil. And then they actually discover it. Uh, I mean, usable oil. So I'm going to, and the other last thing I wanted to bring up is the church. The church is back. The Catholic church is coming back to Cuba. In fact, the Castros are back in church. I have friends who are going to church now with Augustina and Ramon and Mongo, the, some of the, the Castro, uh, some of Fidel and Raul's siblings are actually going to church publicly. Um, and the, it's very interesting to me that Raul's first business meeting, as soon as he officially um, takes power, is with the Pope's emissary. And what I understand is that the Pope will be visiting there in early 2009. The Knights of Columbus, the right hand of the church, are going back, I think, in the next month. So we're seeing a complete revitalization. There's even a wonderful story all over Miami that Padro... Padre uh, Amado Llorente, who was uh, Fidel's teacher at Belen, that he's already been to Cuba to give last rites. I, actually, I've heard he's done it twice, so it's probably completely untrue. But I just say between, we're, we're in a whole different world with Cuban politics because of one, oil, the return of the church, and what I see Raul, I think Raul is going to, um, not just this China, he's moving towards economic reform because one, he has to, and two, he has the confidence, and three, he's got some amazing trading partners now with uh, Brazil, uh, Venezuela, and a whole, I think there's seven countries that have lined up to, to work on uh, oil exploration in the Gulf.